Welcome back. You're watching Indian Open right here on Bloomberg Quaint Live. Let's take a quick glance across Asia and see what's been happening out there. A mixed bag of sorts. So Japan is down about a quarter. China is flat and Hang Seng trades with marginal gains. And so is the SGX Nifty, which is up marginal 10 odd points. Uh, 12,282 is what we've got. Good morning, Neeraj. It's clearly going to be about how the yields react in today's session post the big RBI operation twist announcement more than the equities so far because I, I, I would like to believe that their equities are okay for the time being. Yeah, equities are okay for the time being, but the bond yield certainly would react. The, the point is, is there a, a positive effect on some of the PSU banks, for example, as a result of this because the market would like to believe that there would be some MTM gains there too in mm -hmm. their portfolios. So, I mean, whether that happens or no is other thing. But yeah, I mean, this should this should this should be. I mean, I, I said in the morning as well, David. To my mind, uh, forget equities. Yeah. Nine a.m. The yields will be the really interesting ones to watch out for. Yeah, and what the happens to IT too post censure? I mean, while they've obviously upped the lower end of their guidance in terms of the revenue numbers, the fact that the bookings have come off, Very particularly in the two big sectors that most of the IT biggies here too are major players in, could have a negative impact of sorts. So uh, we'll watch out for all of those names which have already run up. So the likes of TC. Yes, emphasis. They've started to make big moves. Also important to keep an eye out on the derivative space. Namneet is joining us right now to give us a, a quick setup of what's expected today. Namneet, good morning. Good morning to both of you. Well, uh, yesterday was the third straight day of record closing coming in for the market. So everything's going well, but there are no fresh long positions at least coming up for the futures. Nifty futures yesterday, as you can see, open interest was just about flattish. The premium in the last six session has come in, come off from those levels of 55 to now nine points. Bank Nifty slightly underperformed, maybe due to expired options expiry, but the premium there too has come off and the open interest was down about two to three percent. India volatility index is now currently at four to four and a half month low so 12.12 if fresh buying has to come in at these levels wix will definitely support that options data the pcr has been inching higher giving you an indication that there is more put writing which is taking place in the system so yesterday's pcr across all series stood at 1.74 versus previous closing of 1.72 for next thursday expiry which is on december 26 the setup in terms of maximum open interest concentration it is at the 12,002 hundred put uh, followed by uh, the 12,300 uh, call. Uh, this is the open interest distribution for December 26. Yes, so that's the range probably you can watch out. The range uh, has moved ahead with the rally that we have seen. So 12,050 becomes an important mark because that's also the level where the 20 day moving average is placed. And in terms of open interest change yesterday, there was put riding coming in on strikes, uh, strikes like 12,200 as well as the 12,300 out of the money call strikes 12,400 also witnessed some open interest additions. So keep an eye on 11, uh, 12,050 on the downside to 12,300 or 350 on the upside. In terms of individual stock futures, then a lot of stocks hitting 52 week high, but yesterday's, yesterday auto space was in focus. You did see fresh long positions coming in for escorts, TVS Motors witnessed short covering, SRF touched its 52 week high. You did see fresh long positions on the futures side and Mutut Finance, the gold financing companies have been in focus and this one witnessed fresh long positions also. So uh, FI data, four straight day of, uh, you know, contribution coming in, at least on the cash side. On index futures, uh, longs went up as they added nearly 9,500 contracts. And currently, uh, the FIs are net long on index futures to the tune of about 54%. With that, it's back to you guys. Right, Namne, thanks very much for that. So we'll be watching out for all of those names, watching for the big auto names as well, which show, saw a sharp bounce in yesterday's uh, trade. But uh, bringing in Amit Jiswani, founder of Stallion Asset Management, he's joining us this morning. Amit, uh, good morning to you. Uh, just about two weeks left, not even two, I think just about a few days left to go for uh, you know, the new year to begin. We're at record highs. Uh, you know, is this optimistic cheer likely to last a little bit longer? Hi, Devina. Good morning. Thank you so much for having me on your show. Uh, Devina, we are very bad with uh, predicting uh, what will happen the next year. I'll just give you an example. In, by end of 2016, there was demonetization and uh, GST was going to happen in the next three, four months. Uh, everyone thought that probably the economy would be bad because of demonetization. What happened was that Nifty and all other indexes went up anywhere between 30 to 50 percent in 2017. 
uh, by end of 2017, we all thought that uh, all uh, now promoters cannot do chori. Uh, now you, the, the the right strategy would be to buy chori promoters. But what happened in 2018 was exactly the uh, opposite, and all chori promoters went down anywhere between uh, 40 to 80 percent. Uh, 20, by end of uh, by end of 2018, if you see any TV channel, the debate was about uh, it, it, will there be a recession in the U.S. market. Uh, uh, if you see this year, the U.S. market Dow Jones is up 24 percent, Nasdaq is up 34 percent. So at the start of the year. All whatever we predict, I can with some conviction say, looking at previous data, we always go wrong. So uh, uh, I, I like 2020 will be a very interesting year, but very tough to predict what what's going to happen. There are way too many uh, uh, things that can go right, wrong uh, for the markets. If you see the Fed, uh, the Fed was declining, uh, was reducing its balance sheet after 2000, from 2009 to 2015. It was consistently increasing its balance sheet in 2000. 2015 that topped out at 4.5 trillion dollars. Uh, the the balance sheet was steadily declining till 3.7 trillion dollars in uh, August 2019. But mm -hmm. in the last three months itself, uh, surprisingly, Fed has bought 400 billion dollars uh, worth of. Uh, right. It expanded its balance sheet by 400 billion dollars, and that's why you see a very strong global rally. Uh, it's very tough to predict what 2020 would look like. No, it's not about predicting, and I didn't want you to predict levels for me. But just the fact that if someone has to take an investment decision um, as they step into 2020, what kind of themes does one look at? Whether or not there is, in fact, uh, enough headroom left to go, because these are uncharted territory, and therefore, what kind of strategy should one adopt with regards to cash allocation as well? Does one sit on cash? Does one fully deploy? the we are we are fully invested the trends are no investors should uh, question the trend when it's in force if you look at private financials amc insurance uh consumer technology mnc pharma themes are set for this bull market the uh, uh there are stocks which are not slowing down their growth uh, of course the growth rate the hurdle growth rate now cannot be 25 30% you have to be comfortable at 15 20% but now there are many companies see when a, when when companies grow at 15% in a slow bad period once the growth comes back these will be the companies that will grow faster at 25 odd percent so uh, Uh, we are going through a very cyclical very dirty uh, slowdown uh, this is the lo longest and the most painful slowdown the economy is seen but what will happen there will be a gradual clean up uh, this is going to be the swachh bharat bull market devina uh, it is very clear the trends are clear that uh, markets will not Uh, there are four kinds of risk business risk valuation risk uh, management risk industry risk uh, this bull market one thing is very clear do not take on management risk the leader of last bull market was about taking management risk in this bull market the management risk will not work uh, the markets will be narrow the the rally will be similar to what happened between 2009 to 2015 14 if you see that rally even though the markets moved nowhere you had markets chasing pharma consumer kind of stocks wherever market saw growth and that time also if you see go back and see everyone was complaining markets were narrow for that 3 4 years but market chase is growth so why would someone bet on a small cap if uh, the growth rate is not even 15 20% uh, typically like people like us a uh, bet on small caps if we have more than 20% because my large cap portfolios are growing at 20% why would i bet on small cap till the time i don't get at least the 30% kind of growth uh, there uh, so uh, we need growth for price to get uh, go higher for small caps as well though i do believe to 2021 see small caps rally every 4 years and that's the cycle small caps rally uh, it, they rallied in 2017 they rallied in 2014 2010 2007 2003 4 so there are 
once every four years you have a large small cap surge probably i'm not so sure but just going by that four year cycle uh, probably 2021 would be the year of small caps but we have also started investing somewhat in yes. small caps we've increased our weights uh, in the small cap yeah. a little bit but these are very high quality small cap stocks all right so it's still going to be with quality names that you need to stick by uh, we'll uh, wait and watch for how growth shapes up um, whether 2020 as a year will be any better in terms of earnings too. Uh, Ahmed, just stay on with us. Lots more to discuss with you. But let's also go across to our research team who's joining us right now to talk a little bit more about a few more stocks and news that one needs to keep in mind. Uh, Nikki will be joining in for that. And what's in store for some of the Indian IT biggies on the back of Accenture's uh, reportage? Agam joins in for that. But Nikki, first off to you. Uh, I'll start off with Sun Pharma. That's a negative development coming in for the company where the company has received one more, uh, rather the Halol plant has received one more repeat observation. And the observation includes uh, out of specification failure, poor testing practice and uh, manufacturing uh, and uh, doubtful manufacturing standards. We're also looking at Bajaj Finance, which is acquired in 10% stake in Carvi right now. Uh, the acquisition is pursuant to uh, invocation of pledged shares of the company for recovering of dues. Also, we're looking at Crystal, where uh, there is a relatively small or reasonable size of acquisition coming in. The company has bought on Greenwich Associates for $40 million. That's uh, aggregating to around 285 odd crore. This acquisition is expected to be completed by Jan to March quarter uh, for the company. Do keep an eye out also on NMDC. There is yet another uh, feather in the cap for the company. The company has gone ahead and bought an uh, Tokisud North Coal Mine, which is in addition to uh, on a block. This is expected to add EBITDA of around 46 crore for the company. We are also looking at Colte Patel where Pabrai Group has gone ahead and added a stake in the counter from 7% to 9.5%. So some positive development on account of that. And so is the case with GM Financial where the board has gone ahead and increased the FBI uh, uh, investment limit to, uh, to 40% from 24% right now. Hi, Dinky. Thanks very much for that. Agam, it's going to be interesting to see what the, some of these big IT firms do. While obviously the, the headline numbers were fine, the guidance yeah. was also fine, but yeah. the fact that the bookings have slowed down could mean something big for even Indian IT majors who have an exposure to two, those two big segments. of our uh, Yeah, you know, when you design. try and draw a, a parallel between Accenture and TCS and Infosys, perhaps even Wipro, well, there is always, uh, it's not always congruent. But uh, again, there certainly are some takeaways that you can always take into cognizant considering well the earnings have come through and well Accenture can give you be a, a little bit of precursor so well we do have a, a constant currency growth of as much as nine percent year on year which is higher than the upper end of the guidance of around five to eight percent but what they've also done is that they have cut that lower end from uh, six percent to five percent so that may uh, indicate that there's a possibility that there could be some weakness in store as well that's something that that uh, Accenture is also well, you know, anticipating. What are the implications for the Indian IT uh, well, vendors? Financial services did show improvement, on a, but that was on a lower base. Uh, and all, also, there's been strong double-digit growth in insurance. This is a big positive for, well, TCS and Infosys, considering they do have substantial exposure to the insurance sector. Capital markets and Europe, uh, in general, have remained volatile. And, uh, of course, the entire sector as a whole uh, does have uh, you know, some repercussions. And of course, uh, industrials and auto remain weak, and this is largely in trend, uh, or la largely in trend in, in line with what the indications were from TCS, Infosys, and Tech Mahindra. So we'll be watching out for how this plays out for some of these Indian IT companies. All right, guys, thanks very much for that. So we'll keep an eye out on all of these names. Amit, let's uh, get your view on IT and what uh, you feel the stocks like Infosys, TCS, HCL Tech, for that matter, and even Bipro could do. Uh, Devina, we don't track so much IT services. We are long on the. We have Nasdaq ETF on our, for our NRI clients. We also have positions in consumer uh, product companies. The large money would be made in product companies, but in IT services, the only stock we like is TCS. Uh, but we don't have it in any of our portfolios. See, in IT, raw material is your employee cost. That's your raw material, and. Uh, 
TCS can hire at let's say at least 10% cheaper like if I am a TCS employee I'm getting 35,000 for me to if I get a job at 38,000 in some other company I won't shift so TCS has that mode of hiring people at extremely low cost uh, that, and that's the reason they have uh, the higher margin uh, uh, TCS is one bet that uh, we believe like on all our parameters TCS comes true uh, but uh, we don't have any positions here Amit um Good morning. Do you like any of the listed real estate companies? As much as we might like to shrug them off, real estate has arguably been one of the better performing sectors in 2019, uh, despite the broader markets giving negative returns. Do you like a company bottoms up? Neeraj, I do like Godrej properties. See, Neeraj, the entire real estate market in the top five cities, uh, Mumbai, Bangalore, Hyderabad, Pune, and Delhi. These five places, the total real estate sales this year in a bad market was four and a half lakh crores. Uh, Godrej was doing about 5,000 crores of sales. The cost of capital for Godrej this year is 7.9%. For other real estate builders, it's somewhere around 24%. This is one area where I can see with some certainty if you see if you hear Firosha's uh, con call this con call Godrej is spending 5,000 crores on stamp duty payment uh, Godrej doesn't buy its own property uh, Godrej does a joint development model so Godrej Firosha was very clear that we are buying we are paying 5,000 crores of stamp duty what does that mean if you pay 5,000 crores of stamp duty you're broadly buying 1 lakh crore worth of real estate today if you see the last 25 projects of Godrej Neeraj, he sells it pre, like before launch. 70% of the projects are sold within one week. So he gets a negative cash flows. The other real estate builders uh, are not able to sell even after OC. Uh, this is, you need a strong competitive advantage. The unit economics are right. And you know, Godrej doesn't, if you think about it, Godrej even doesn't build the real estate. It's companies, he outsources it to companies like Capicite, Shapunji, Palunji, LNT to make it. So if you think about the real business model, Godrej doesn't buy land. Uh, Godrej just pays stamp duty. Uh, he just does marketing. Uh, he gets customer advances up front uh, and he doesn't have to construct it. So it's one of the better business models, I would say. He's 1% of the market. If you take uh, the entire uh, four top five city market, he's 1% of the market. Uh, I don't believe real estate is a bad business. It's a hundred year old proven business. It works well. I believe Godrej is one place where I can trust the management and this guy has the ability to scale for a long, long, long time. Mm. But also, Neeraj, one more thing that, one more trend that I'm seeing is in the commercial real estate category. Now, commercial real estate is exactly the opposite of residential real estate. In commercial real estate, if there's a thousand crore project, you have to invest because there is no thing as pre-sell in commercial. No one's gonna buy it till the building is not ready. So if there is a thousand crore commercial uh, project, you have to invest the entire thousand crores and then probably put it on rent or sell it. Uh, in commercial space, I can tell you the rents have gone abnormal re levels in Hyderabad, Mumbai, uh, because there is no uh, Bangalore, because there is no new construction coming up. A very good, very, very good model is having uh, commercial rentals on one side and reinvesting that commercial rental in residential side, a model which Oberoi has, but Oberoi doesn't scale up that fast. So that's a problem and that's why we don't have uh, Oberoi in our portfolio. But real estate is one space that you should really look at especially the commercial real estate i believe that's where large because you have a buyer at eight percent blackstone is ready to buy all commercial assets at eight percent cap rate right. uh, if you can make decent commercial assets i believe uh, you will do very very well for the next few years there is no one who's building commercial sure. assets neeraj no one has balance sheet power yeah, the supply is also slightly off but hey uh, some of the REIT models uh, are starting to do that as well embassy office parks for example is doing precisely that DLF in their interaction mentioned about how they're going big on commercial real estate as well starting now so let's wait and watch what happens um, just a couple of pockets I want to highlight before we move a bit towards the technicals one uh, I, I think uh, what happened in trade yesterday um, in, in in the last half an hour was telco shot up Bharti Airtel and Vodafone idea in particular reliance was anyways up but Bharti Airtel and Vodafone idea in the last half an hour one hour shot up in trade 
cool off a little bit as well. But yeah, you know, I don't know. It's my personal opinion, but I think the market misconstrued some of the comments that came in from Sunil Mittal as that. Uh, as they I mean, will he even said the that they will head Arcusa. higher. Yeah, but it'll, uh, he, he's just making a comment as to how how, what need. the need is. And yeah. how he would hope for Arpus to move up. So, at least that was my assessment of when I heard those uh, comments from Sunil Mittal. And therefore, uh, for the stocks to go up, I, I think it was a bit of a foolhardy move, really. I mean, and maybe it will cool off in the session today because uh, an entrepreneur may want or desire whatever he wants. Doesn't mean that that's what the trajectory of the... Uh, ARPUs would be and therefore uh, maybe just maybe there should be a bit of a cool off out here so do watch out for these even Rajan Matthews when we spoke to him the other day when you know there was a pushback on the abolition of the termination oh, fees uh, said that uh, you know there's the industry need. needs to get to an ARPU of 300 yeah so there's a there's a desire within the incumbents for these ARPUs to move up higher doesn't mean that it'll happen that way. So that's an interesting pocket to monitor. And of course, we'll also talk to Amit Jaiswani about, uh, I don't know whether he tracks them or not, but uh, some of those shrimp companies, uh, yesterday might have been an off day for Avanti, but some of the, and not an off day really, just a small uh, underperformance compared to the others. But the other stocks, Water Bays, Apex Frozen, just did really well. Maybe we'll talk about those as well. But I think we should focus a bit on the technicals. So let's first start off with our special segment, Bloomberg Edge, wherein Yash Upadhyay tells us about a pattern that the terminal has thrown up on a stock. Yash, what's the stock on your radar today? Good morning. Morning, Neeraj. So we're first looking at uh, uh, basically fine organics, uh, and there's a buy signal coming in on the back of the fear and greed indicator. The fear and greed indicator, as you know, uh, is a proprietary Bloomberg indi indicator. It uses the spread between the two weighted moving averages of the true range, and it oscillates on a zero basis line. So any reading in the positive would mean that the fear and greed indicator would flip uh, from red to green, and whenever the indicator would give a negative value uh, on the oscillator, it would change its color from green to red. And now coming back to the price chart of fine organics, and this is on the daily time frame uh, that the indicator has given a positive call uh, we saw the price come off from the levels of in excess of 2000 rupees and it has been in a consistent uptrend but over the last two to three uh, last two month period we have seen some amount of cooling off coming in uh, from those higher levels it has come down and settled around the mark of 1800 but then we saw a big move in yesterday's day of trade we are seeing this big green candle over here uh, on the, as far as the price action is concerned and in the lower panel too we are seeing the fear and greed indicator uh, give a positive signal after almost over a month uh, being in the red zone. So the positive indicator on the fear and greed uh, has been uh, triggered. And most importantly, as far as patterns is also concerned, we see we saw that the stock has managed to break out from its symmetrical triangle pattern. So uh, it made a double bottom at the, around the mark of 1800. You join the trend line from down and you see that this big breakout came up uh, in yesterday's day of trade. So multiple indicators, the pattern uh, being one of them, as well as the indicator of uh, the fear and greed indicator, suggesting that uh, there is long posi position being built around the mark of 1800 and there is uh, the, uh, the risk to reward ratio is highly favorable for going long in fine organics right now right yash and how well has this worked in past extremely well devina because seven out of the last nine times that the fear and greed indicator has given a positive call uh, over the next one month period the stock has managed to give on a closing basis returns of close to around five and a half percent thanks a lot for that yash so there's bloomberg edge there and watch out for uh, fine organics. Uh, one other stock actually in the same space and may not be doing all that well is Vinati Organics. That's just been um, a clear underperformer after the last few uh, months where it has done okay for itself. This month it's just about a 3% move. Uh, it's come off but we'll get our technical experts to talk about this stock too in a bit. Uh, Shrikant Chauhan, Senior Vice President of uh, Technical Research at Kotak Securities is joining us on the show. Shrikant, good morning to you. Uh, let's talk about the Nifty levels now. Where are we positioned? Good morning, everybody. Good morning. See, the Nifty is uh, moving higher. It is forming higher highs on daily basis. In fact, uh, yesterday when the weekly expiry was there, the market has managed to close above the mark of 12,200, which is extremely positive for the market. The market has, uh, we can say that the market has shifted its base from the levels of 11,800 to 12,000 levels. And the overall position is clearly indicating us that it, in case if there is any decline, uh, in next few days or few weeks, then close to 12,000 certainly it's a buy. But uh, in today's date, we are of the view that if we see any drop uh, close to 12,000, 150, 160, which was its previous hurdle, so if we see the market is uh, falling to those levels, we should look, look for adding long positions on Nifty with a stop loss at 12,100 on the downside. Again, we can expect uh, at least uh, 12,000, uh, 350, 400 on the higher side. 
Bank Nifty is also moving higher and it is also holding well above the mark of 32,000. So there also we feel that it is heading for at least 32,350, 400. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, that's on the Nifty Bank and on the index as well. What about individual stocks? Uh, see, like uh, we should look for adding those stocks which have, which have not participated heavily in this particular up move, like Dr. Reddy, which is uh, uh, holding above the mark of uh, 2850, uh, 2860 levels. Uh, we feel that the stock has completed its corrective move and now again it is uh, ready to move higher. So it was around 2870 yesterday. We are of the view that again it is heading for at least 2970, 2975. So it's a buy at this price with a stop loss at uh, 2830 on the downside. The other stock which we like is Grasim and the reason is because the stock has corrected nicely to the levels of 740, 735 from the highs of 820, 830. So from here again we can see some rebound at least 770, 775. So it's a buy at this price uh, Grasim with a stop loss at 730. All right. Uh, you know, Yash was just talking about fine organics yeah. um, and Vinati organics. Can you just tell us whether this is... These are uh, uh, tradable stocks. Do you feel you'd like to take a trade on any of these? No, I think uh, all these uh, stocks are in specific range. And currently they are available at their important support areas. So yesterday when the fine organic was like uh, trading somewhere close to 1800 levels, we saw some recovery and it was mainly because of the range bound activity. The stock has spent a lot of time uh, close to this 1800 levels. And whenever it recovers from here, it moves back to the levels of at least 2000, 2020. The similar formation is for Vinati Organic and there also we feel that it is going to consume some more time between this range and in case if we see any drop close to uh, 1900 or 1880 then certainly it's a buy because the overall trend, overall setup of the stock is still very strong and till the stock is not closing below the levels of 1800 we should look for adding long uh, positions on it. You know, a lot of these stocks are trading near life highs as mm -hmm. well, not Vinati really but SRF and Naveen Florin are both trading at life highs. Uh, Deepak Nitride right. is trading at life highs and s Vinati doesn't have that benefit but the others in fact Vinati might actually see a bit of a deceleration in sales and uh, profitability and margins but um, which is why we've seen the underperformance even likely the, yeah, yes the basis, but the yeah. likes of um, SRF Naveen Florin Deepak Nitride right, all have a benefit of an expanded capacity and a base effect coming in for the next two or three quarters at least hmm. and therefore the revenue performance could actually be much better in the quarters to come in fact, Naveen Florin was, uh, you know, top Diwali pick by quite a, a few of the guests at least. Yeah, with reason they've announced a capex, which mm. they don't do, and they've done this in a, after a really long time. But anyway, Chase, we'll talk more about this with Amit as well, but Shubham Magarwal is with us too. Shubham, we'll get in your index strategy too, but since we are talking stocks, you want to first start off with the stock recommendations that you have for the day. Good morning to you. Yes, hi, good morning. Uh, so two stocks and both are on the buy side. The first one uh, is a buy on Kotak Bank. Uh, and if you look at the derivative data in Kotak Bank for a very long time, uh, we have seen that a long, long unwinding structure is intact, which generally means that the overall trend for the stock is positive. And now again, there is a continuation pattern on the chart, which is seeing a breakout. So I think uh, this is uh, one of the best place stock from the banking space right now. So Kotak Bank is a buy. Now, since we are moving towards uh, second half of the expiry, we'll take a bull call spread uh, to save our theta. So the strategy will be to buy a 1740 call option and sell one lot of 1780 call option. The net spread is at 10 rupees. We're looking for a target of 20 rupees with a stop loss at five. And the second recommendation is a buy call on Nestle. Now, since options is not very liquid on Nestle, we will be uh, trading in the futures market. Uh, but if you look at the overall sector, the consumption stocks have uh, now started witnessing a decent up move. And now Nestle, which is placed around the lower end of the uh, oscillating range, uh, there's a mean reversion, which is very highly likely. And uh, for the last two, three days, we have seen that minor longs have started getting created in the futures data. So Nestle is a buy for a target of 15,000 with a stop loss at 13,850. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's the other uh, interesting pocket to monitor as well. Shubham, just wondering on the index itself, are you taking a long call and are you taking plain vanilla futures or are you using options? Actually, on, on the Nifty, if you see, you know, Nifty is showing uh, some positive trend and obviously because it is making higher highs, so there is uh, no reason why anyone would want to go and short it. But if you look at the uh, inherent data, you know, Bank Nifty is not uh, supportive. 
Uh, we have seen for the last uh, two, three days that the bank Nifty is showing a mixed trend, that derivative data is also witnessing some shorts which are coming in place. And if you look at the PCR, the PCR is now placed at 1.75, which is a highly optimistic number. And generally, when we see such a high reading, uh, market generally tends to make a top. But obviously, these are add-on indicators, so we cannot really predict that this will happen today. So that's the reason I'm not very confident on the Nifty, but obviously, the trade is still positive. Uh, with a trailing stop loss, which is very, which will be very important now because uh, market could see a reversal at any point of time. Uh, so roughly 12,200 is a good support that can act as a trailing support. If anyone is holding, they can continue to hold for a target of 12,350. But uh, fresh trades is something that I would like to avoid on Nifty for now. All right. 30 seconds, Shubham, quickly. Godrej Properties after yesterday's uh, move in the last half an hour. Uh, so, Godrej property, yes, uh, after the four or five days consolidation, uh, we have seen a breakout that has happened yesterday. So, I think uh, this will see follow up buying. So, it's a buy with a stop loss at 925 for a target of uh, 970. Okay. 40 seconds left to go for market pre open. Asia is the pocket, is still more mixed bag. We've got uh, uh, China doing okay, about a tenth of a percent or so. Japan's down a quarter. Uh, Hong Kong's up a half a percent or so. For the SGX Nifty, we're maintaining those marginal gains of about 8 odd points. So 12,281 is where we are at. We're going to watch out for what happens to some of those auto names which were up and active in yesterday's session and whether or not that kind of follow through buying comes into today's trade as well. So all of those names along with technology stocks. Now what happens um, after we've got Accenture talking about uh, slowing down in terms of bookings within the BFS and the auto segments. Pre-open, on your screens, we've got uh, 12,000 thereabouts on the Nifty, a cut of one odd percent. Uh, that's changing quickly as we speak. And then you've got Sensex, which is up half an odd percent. It's all about stocks this morning, so we're going to focus there. Uh, technology stocks have seen a little bit of a dropping, actually, that's changing too. Uh, Tech Mahindra is down 3%. So that stock's looking slightly weak. Uh, that's the only one I think that's there uh, within the top few losers. TCS is also down, but marginally about a third of a percent. Kodak Mahindra Bank is losing about 2.8 percent. Nestle is suddenly showing you a 5 percent cut. Gale is down 1.4 percent. Steel stocks are looking weak. They've had a good run, some profit taking there. HGFC Bank is down half a percent. Power Grid, Indian Oil, Asian Paints are some of your other losers. Amongst your gainers, Tata Motors is up 2.7%, Z is at 284, Bajaj Auto continues to do well, that's up 1%, HCL Tech continues its ride, 574, Ultratech, UPL, Dr. Reddy, Indusin Bank are some of your other major gainers in trade, Infi is up a quarter of a percent right now, so that's what you've got, Bharti Airtel, uh, after the big move yesterday, has opened positive, no great shakes, just a tenth of a percent or so, but it's still open in the green. 450 on Bharti Airtel. For the currency, we're looking weak this morning, a uh, tenth of a percent or so, 71.12. But a more important watch is the bond yields and, and what happens thereof post the announcement of Operation Twist and the OMOs by the RBI. I don't know whether we have those rates going yet or not, but uh, we'll wait and watch when we get those uh, tickers. Yeah, and, that ticker going. And we'll see those reactions as well. Just very quickly, a couple of broader end of the spectrum stocks. Uh, JM Financial might react a bit. I don't know if it'll be a 16% reaction. It's very volatile, uh, but or a 4% reaction. But the upping of the uh, FPI limit, uh, I don't know if it's a precursor to some bit of fundraising or some activity out there, but maybe the markets would want to watch that stock. So do watch out for that one. I would also watch out for the likes of SRF and Naveen Florine, uh, simply because of the kind of moves that we've seen in those stocks. And BHEL, let's just see if there's some downtick. Morgan Stanley's cut the target price to 37 uh, from 46. So do watch out for that. And the bond yields should be brought up on the screen because, frankly, today it's about the yields um, and 6.62. That's that's a gash, all right. Remember, we had gone up as high as 6.82, and now we are at about 6.62. Without much ado and without trying to opine too much, let's get in an expert who tracks this very, very closely. Bhaskar Panda, the regional head of Treasury Advisory Group at HDFC Bank, joins us right now on the phone line. Mr. Panda, thanks so much for taking the time out and speaking to us at Bloomberg Queen. Uh, your thoughts about whether this reaction is a one-off or do you think the markets would want to believe that there could be more such operations and the trajectory of the long-term tenure could be downwards from here on? 
trajectory could be downwards going forward, but uh, uh, in my opinion, it will be limited to you know uh, uh, somewhere between say 640, 650. It could uh, over around that for quite long time. Uh, whether this is one of our uh, that that is something which we need to you know wait and see. But it could not be, in my opinion, only one of. It might uh, you know have. Uh, uh, some more coming in. Uh, if RBI wants to keep, uh, you know, this uh, uh, yields uh, to a, a reasonably, uh, you know, estimable level, so probably we could see this going towards 650, and after that it will stabilize around that. Mm. Mr. Panda, good morning. Um, you know, what does this yield curve management demonstrate on the part of the RBI? No, your uh, nominal GDP growth is uh, something which we need to look at, and if uh, there is a divergence between your yield curve and the nominal GDP growth, probably this is the right, uh, you know, mechanism to uh, address it. Okay. Do you anticipate more OMOs of this kind? I think it will not be only one. You know, it might be uh, some more. Because this was surprising, and after that, probably it will be some more coming in. Hmm. The term premium of 150 basis points was anyway started to be too high. Uh, what is a comfortable zone for you? I think six and a half is on ten year is something uh, is uh, should be comfortable around around that. I think people would be. I think everyone should be comfortable around that. Mr. Panda, just one final question from mine, at least. Uh, FPI buyers have largely been missing from the Indian bond markets in the in the recent few months. Do you anything anything that could bring them back uh, and and therefore help this uh, quote unquote yield management even more? I don't think so. No. I I don't think it is made uh, for that. But uh, you know. But I'm uh, asking if there is something else that could get the FPI buyers back. I mean, whether it has to I, be something on the fisc side which will help that. No, I don't think there is anything that I could see foresee right now, uh, which will bring them back. Obviously, the yield is something which is uh, uh, their uh, cup of tea, and uh, I really don't. I, I don't have an idea at this point of time. Something else could be done to bring them back onto the mm. market. What is your view on the short-term rates then? On uh, certain rates, I think it will remain a little subdued now. Let's see how it uh, pans out going forward. Okay, Mr. Pan uh, uh, Panda, thanks very much for joining us. Really appreciate you taking out the time. Okay, thanks. So, around thanks. six and a half is what he believes should be a comfortable area. Yeah, I mean, yesterday uh, in the conversation with Ida, I think Anand, Anand and Arvind Chari, both of them mentioned that. Uh, maybe, according to them, the markets would want to believe that this will not be a one-off but a continuous mm. process and maybe mm -hmm. uh, twisting down this yield curve at the long end might bring the rates down even further. Let's wait and watch. For now, there is a reaction. We certainly cooled off from those highs of 6.8 to a few days ago. Let's see if there is more in store, but a sharp reaction nevertheless. Let's see if the PSU banks react a bit in the session today as well, sentimentally or otherwise. Maybe there could be a reaction thereof. Before we get back to Amit Jaiswani, just let's get in Somit Sarkaru Johnson with the top brokerage calls for the day. Somit, you have two on your list today. Uh, good morning, Niraj. Yes, uh, Morgan Stanley firstly on BHL where they have maintained the underweight rating. I've cut the target price to 37 from 46. Now, according to the brokerage, the macro outlook looks tough for BHL. Now, there has been delay in new orders, contraction in uh, plant load factors of state plants and balance sheet has been weak for these state plants. And along with this, uh, uh, renewable generation is continuing to gain share. Now, to factor in these negatives, the brokerage has cut its earnings estimate by nearly 22% and 19% for FY21 and FY22. The second one is on Adani post where Kotak Securities has maintained its buy rating with a target price of 450 rupees. Now, according to the brokerage, better, better operate, operating performance of key entities beyond Adani Ports has countered the solvency concerns of the group. Along with this, pledge shares have stagnated and can decline meaningfully going forward on the recent stake sale transactions. Along with this, the balance sheet of Adani Ports allows big addition to business portfolio beyond the Gujarat Ports that currently Adani Ports has in its portfolio. And lastly, it continues to remain bullish on the stock as the Gujarat Port of Adani Ports has remained aloof from the slowdown and Adani Ports has been outperforming the industry currently. Right. Samit, thanks very much uh, for that.
Uh, Devin Choksi of KR Choksi is joining us right now as well. Devin, good morning to you. Uh, let's you know, begin the conversation with your own assessment of the market mood, investment climate that we are in, be it domestic cues that we're getting, be it uh, be, you know, uh, global cues that we're watching. What is it that you are advising to clients as well? Yes, good morning. <clears throat> We have been uh, looking at the uh, performance of different stocks both fundamentally as well as I think the stock price performance in the market. And what we found out that uh, only top 20 stocks which have performed have ended up giving a return. In case of first 10 stocks I think have given the return of around 23-24% and the balance 10 stocks have given around 8.8% return. Rest of all the stocks in the market since uh, February 2018, April 2018 period till date have actually given negative return to a varied degree. In fact, I think the last uh, uh, 500 and above number of stocks, I think they have given a negative return of more than 45 percent. So why I am putting this data here before you that I think the market, as you ask the question, market is absolutely polarized. Only those 10, 20 stocks which are basically performing, they are part of uh, the journey in the market and which is resulting into higher level of index. This has happened I think largely after the categorization that CB did in the large cap, mid caps and small cap. Thereafter I think suddenly the preference for the mid cap and small caps uh, completely gone away from the market. Uh, in my viewpoint I think market continues to stay polarized, uh, market continues to I think prefer only few names. Probably I think the larger amount of conviction stays with the financial portfolios, the corporate banks with a good amount of uh, management on the non-performing asset side, the management which uh, with the retail credit lending where I think they are largely comfortable. The companies which are, which are in insurance business, life insurance business in particular, I think they are basically finding favor in the market, AMC business is finding favor in the market. So largely it is the financial portfolio which is finding favor in the market. Reliance is exception where I think it is showing the growth largely because of the geo and the retail platform which has become commercial success. So I guess I think it is a very very narrow market as I review it I think in the current situation and we tell client to stay with only good quality stocks and not to try and attempt uh, into I think the weak mid cap stocks uh, per se at this point of time. Okay, minutes away from market open and we'll tell you all that you need to know to stay ahead in uh, trade today as well. But Amit Jiswani, just one question to that because you earlier answer mentioned and uh, both you and Devin echoed this sentiment. What's the rationale and, and if you can make it slightly quick Amit, what's the rationale for somebody to put in fresh money to work in either an HDFC, AMC or a Reliance Nippon Asset Management at these valuations? See Neeraj, this is my thesis, I can be completely wrong but at the end of this bull market, HDFC, AMC, there will be two years there where your AUMs will grow at 20% uh, and new people because the markets will go up 20% and 20% growth will come from new people joining because with the bull market everyone joined the rally. There will be two years that I think, I, I, I can be very wrong here where you'll have a 30% plus free cash flow growth in HDFC AMC. At that point, you will have peak margins, peak valuations, peak free cash flows, and uh, everything will peak out at the same time. So uh, that is the only thing uh, which is there. On the downside, see HDFC AMC is at 1400 crores of profit. They will make in FY20, 1400 crores of profit, uh, and it's at 66,000 crores of valuation. So it's somewhere around 45 PE. I don't think this one will go anywhere. Uh, the downside risk is not so much. At uh, like 10-15% downside risk is the only risk which I see from these levels. But I do expect if this is a bull market, a proper bull market, uh, there will be at least two years Neeraj where the markets will go up 20% and AUM will also go up 20% in the equity side. So that will be, uh, that'll be the top uh, topping part. This is what I see. See no large crash happens when everyone speaks about a slowdown. The crashes and large drawdowns happen when everyone is full hyper and everyone's in that euphoria mode. I have not seen, uh, uh, there is no history of a stock market crashes. Uh, 
with so much slowdown. But the problem is India is in a slowdown and US markets are in that euphoric mode. So if US markets go down, we will have to go down with them. So uh, that is one thing that I worry because at one side India is on an extreme slowdown, US is on extreme wave 5 kind of euphoria. So if there is a crash which will happen in the markets, it will not be an Indian crash, it will be a US crash and that's 100% sure. All right. Amit, it was a pleasure chatting with you as always. Thank you very much for joining us this morning. Thank you. Thank you, Davina. Thank you, Neeraj. All right. Uh, let me come to you. HDFC, MC, RNAM, in terms of a trade, is, it, is anything opening up? I think, see, the stock is uh, very clearly uh, uh, indicating us that it is going to outperform to the overall space or even to the market because the way there was run up and the stock has corrected from the highs of 3,800. I think it's a buy at these price more on dips. But again, we can see the levels of 36.50, 36.75 on the higher side. So we are uh, optimistic and if there is any correction, then suddenly it's a buy. Uh, I'm not expecting stock to fall below the levels of 28.50 so easily. All right, a minute left to go for market open. Uh, quick top calls from both our technical experts and then we come back and discuss more with Devain as well. Shubham Agarwal, what is it that you're going to be watching out in terms of a stock uh, a specific move this morning? Uh, so, Devina, my top call for the day will be Berger Paint and uh, we saw a breakout happening yesterday after the consolidation. I feel that there will be some more follow-up buying there. So, we can participate this with an uh, option of 510 uh, strike call option. Uh, so, uh, 510 strike call option can be bought for a target of 12 rupees with a stop loss at 4 rupees. Okay, Berger Paints is Shubham's call. Uh, Shikant, what's your call for the day? I think, Devina, after this uh, fall in uh, bond yield, uh, we are of the view that state bank should do well. It is around uh, 320 at 29 levels. Buy at this price with a stop loss at 323. Again, we can see the levels of 340. Okay. Jamin, stay on. Um, it'll be lovely to get an opening thoughts from you as well post market open to uh, just to assess the trends because we are likely to start off very flat and therefore it becomes even more important to try and figure out if there are stocks which could be available uh, post open for a trade. Depends on how they start off because as you can see, the equity markets so or the benchmark indices have started off very, very flat. The Nifty 55 points, Sensex about, well, just about 0.08% uh, or 0.06% and the Nifty Bank to just about 11 points or 7 points in the red now so hardly any movement there i doubt the mid caps and the small caps will be doing something dramatically different again a very flat start for both the indices let's get the heat map up on the screen and see what the breadth is and what's moving and what's not so even stevens for the market breadth as well almost even stevens there uh, what is doing well sbi up about a percent they're not surprising there uh, you would expect that because of this moves that have happened some of the psu banks could be in focus bharti infra marginally higher in trade hero motor cop at the cheapest large cap auto name as Darshan's analysis showed and we'll talk about that too is up about half a percent Adani port gains about half a percent Z half a percent um, well surprise surprise uh, no big reactions in IT because in forces at least is starting off in the green which is maybe a good sign TCS2 margin in the green after two strong days what's not doing well um, uh, yes bank a big seven percent uptick yesterday but that's what we try and tell right Please be careful if you're trading Yes Bank because you never know what it does the other day. It's down about a percent and a half. Britannia down about a percent and a half. Sun Pharma is that newsmaker, and we'll talk with Devin Choksi about that, but down about a percent and a half on that on, on, on the uh, Hello Old Form 43 observations that have come out. One repeat observation has come in as well. Kotak Bank marginally off. Aisha Motors marginally off in trade. So autos which had a big bang day yesterday are just about cooling off at the start today. The markets are absolutely flat. Just a couple of pockets that I want to highlight. Uh, Firstly, <coughs> stocks uh, which have had some trending moves the last few days. Uh, SRF was at life highs yesterday, near new highs again today. Naveen Florin started off marginally higher and Deepak Knight right at 362, just about flattish. But all of these chemical names, specialty chemical games, near their highs in the session today as well. So the start has not been too bad. And BHEL, Morgan Stanley's cut the target. This stock starts off about a couple of percentage points lower. Devina, what are you spotting? Uh, I'm going to start off with SL Pro Pack, which was one of the bigger movers in yesterday's session, is giving back in today's trade. So that stock's down uh, by about to two odd percent. KRBL, I think the day prior to yesterday was the big mover day. It was up 20 percent. Yesterday was a subdued day. Today, again, the stock's down about two, two and a half odd percent. Your lose, usual suspect of losers is, is, is pretty perched uh, at the top 10 losers. BHEL, though, is down uh, two percent. You've got the likes of uh, a, a Rally Gear, which is down one percent. PBR has lost one percent. SEAT is down one percent. 
Uh, India Bulls Housing is down 1% to 290. Then you've got the likes uh, of Lakshmi Vilas Bank, Shipping Corporation of India, RDC, Avenue Supermarts, which are some of your bigger losers in trade today. Uh, taking a look at what uh, Idea Cellular is, I mean, um, Vodafone Idea is doing this morning after yesterday's move, it's down about 2 odd percent. Uh, in terms of gainers, MTNL once again, 5% uh, uptick, JM Financial 4% higher, Colte Patel is up about 2%, Andhra Bank is up 2% should pull up the smaller banks. So following what SBI is doing, you've got Andhra Bank, you've got Syndicate Bank, uh, some of these names, Canada Bank, uh, everything's doing okay for itself right now for some of the smaller names too. Bank of Baroda, 1.5% higher too. Escorts is up 1.5% and future consumer, 1.9% on the stock. So not doing all that bad. Havels, 1.3% higher in trade this morning. And then another bank, Indian Bank, which is also up about a percent. So I think the PSU banking theme is playing out in today's session too. Uh, overall, breadth positive, the start of the trading session, though the index is absolutely flat. You've got 638 stocks, around 600 stocks advancing, 398 stocks which have declined. Yeah, well, quick opening thoughts and then of course we'll continue with Devin Choksi as well. But just quick opening thoughts, Shubham Agarwal, while the indices have started off flat, uh, I, I think everybody's making this valid point about maybe the possibility of PSU banks having uh, some uh, room to perform. Is there a PSU name, uh, not on the option side, but on the future side, that you'd be comfortable initiating a fresh long on? Uh, so if you look at most of the PSU bank movement, I think this is just a pullback because heavy shorts were created uh, and post that a temporary pullback is happening. So if I have to uh, pick anything, that will mostly be just an intraday trade and uh, the stock will be Union Bank. So if you look at the setup of Union Bank, even yesterday there was some attempt to uh, move on the upside and today we are seeing some follow-up buying coming in there. So with an intraday perspective, I believe that uh, the move can extend to the target of 59 uh, and uh, one can look for a stop loss at uh, 56.50. So Union Bank is a buy uh, from just a day's perspective. Uh, Shikant, anything that pops up on your screen that you think is worthwhile initiating a fresh trade on? I think, see, uh, because of this fall in bond deal, again, uh, rate sensi uh, sensitive stocks should do well, like uh, real estate or even from the auto space, we can look for adding few stocks. Uh, like yesterday, Escort was uh, somewhere around 620, 625, and it has formed higher bottom. And if we see the overall pattern of last few days or few weeks, then the stock is forming higher highs, higher bottom. And uh, after consolidating and correcting to the important levels now, again, it is resuming its trends. So I am specifically bullish on it, and we are expecting stock to move towards 676.80 in next uh, few weeks. It will take time, but it's a positional buy at this price. We can keep stop loss around 600 levels uh, to create positional long bet, and we can expect 670, 675 on the higher side. We also like few real estate stocks, but in that, Specifically, we like uh, Kolte Patil because uh, if we see, uh, if, if we are going to see a major uh, uh, U-turn in all uh, real estate companies or stocks, then in that, I think Kolte Patil should do well because it was outperforming and it was holding well above the mark of uh, 210, 220 uh, since last almost uh, six, seven months. So it's a very strong base for the stock and it is reversing from those levels. The stock has already from, formed higher bottom close to 220. So we can again see the levels of at least 310, 320 on the higher side, which will take time. But it's a buy at this price and more on dips. Hmm. Devin Choksi, and of course, remember, our viewers will be talking to uh, Brigade Enterprises a bit later on in the show to get a flavor of what's happening within this space. But Devin, some of these mid-sized uh, real estate names, the non-DLF, non-Godrej properties and non-Obera Realty are starting to show some good sales. I mean, DLF also did that, but Kolte Patil recently, um, they had a stellar um, a couple of days selling off a new property in Pune. Do you like any of these names? Good, uh, Neeraj, I think my observation, <clears throat> many of these uh, realty companies have actually started attracting the institutional buyer, call financial investor into the new projects, who are basically buying these particular projects for a model which is paper use model. And this is an interesting area which is now emerging and emerging very fast. I think the as the real estate prices remain unaffordable for most of the masses, I think here is an opportunity for some of the financiers who basically I think get them at a lower cost uh, from the developers in the pre-building stage itself and then probably start leasing it out to the users on a pay per use basis. So this model is now emerging faster in India. In fact, I think uh, the deal which are getting constructed 
are constructed based on around 8%, 8.5% kind of an yield, which somebody with a long term investment uh, view in mind, I think definitely makes sense. So yes, I do agree that I think some of the newer projects, uh, which are fresh projects and I think which are available on a pre-lease uh, basis, they are basically attracting the attention of some of the institutional buyer and that's where you are seeing the change happening into the mood of the, uh, I think the real estate space. Uh, I do wish that I think this trend continues and probably I think we should be seeing better times going forward for real companies, realty companies. At this point of time, our focus is not, I think, expanded beyond uh, certain names, I think, which are in the large uh, cap names, particularly the larger companies who have got the ability to execute projects faster. So we stay focused on them. We are not, I think, yet going into the smaller realty companies from looking at the investment perspective. Speciality chemicals, Devin, are still, uh, still uh, a theme to stick along with. Yes, and I think it will be a continued trend, a uh, few reasons. Uh, the capacities uh, which have shut in China due to the environmental reasons and also the cost of production is now basically finding uh, itself in India and that is where I think you are seeing some of the good companies uh, in, into the traction because of uh, the larger amount of business which is getting ex expected also from the export side. So to a greater extent, I think the specialty chemical business and the focus coming in from the variety of companies, including the likes of UPL, who have been basically focusing systematically on building the specialty chemical portfolio and the host of other companies, including Sudarshan Chemicals, among others, they have, or Atul for that matter, they have, I think, a, a good size portfolio where they have the ability to get the advantage out of uh, uh, this particular opportunity which has come their way. So yes, I think I like to consider some of the few names I think in the specialty chemical business where we believe that uh, the loss of China is gain for India and I think it could be probably the advantage going in favor of investors as well. Even? I mean, are you at a liberty to say which stock do you like? In specialty chemical? Yes, please. Yeah, so I think we have been uh, reviewing very closely some of the companies and where we find ourselves more comfortable with the management style and the business program that they are conducting. And of course, I think as I name few of them, in which I think UPL also I think has a lot of potential. We like Atul, I think which has been consistently performing well. Uh, we have been also, I think, following this company uh, Sudarshan Chemical. Though they are relatively uh, priced at this point of time, but my viewpoint is that if you are looking at uh, two years from now, probably uh, the portfolio of UPL could possibly give better performance going forward. So one could possibly argue for going into that space. Reliance, of course, is making, I think, a large complex on this side. But I would say that Reliance is a conglomerate. It has got, I think, the variety of businesses into it. So not per se from the specialty chemical point of view, but I think the rest of the business is also, I think, remaining very strong as far as Reliance is concerned. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Reliance Industries there. Devin, what about the big behemoth in the infrastructure space, LNT? Uh, uh, moving like a sloth off late, not giving the kind of returns that you would have anticipated from a, a big house like LNT. What's your sense on whether or not uh, investors who've already invested in the stock is, is it a better option to just exit it and uh, you know find beta someplace else? So on one side, the size of opportunity is big because India is expanding into infrastructure big time. And uh, no better company than LNT would probably register a claim to get that particular size of the opportunity which is coming in the on their way. On the other side, I think the bigger problem is with collection of money. I think most of the projects are facing a situation where the receivables are going beyond the stipulated number of days. And that includes the money coming in from the government side, I think where the release is not happening at the required point of time. And that is creating a problem. In my viewpoint, while the potential remains high, one will have to carefully look at how exactly they are, in the, they are uh, collecting their dues. If they do collect simultaneously, I think in time, my take is that I think companies like LNT would probably appreciate better than what they have done up till now. 
but that is an if I think which is there whether they would be in a position to collect their money in time from the uh, project providers. I think that is a question that is basically affecting the stock price movement of these companies. Okay. Uh, Max Financial should pull that stock up. Uh, that's also had a decent run of late. Uh, today's session is though flat, but yesterday did okay for itself. Uh, Shubham, any uh, any interest in uh, Max Financial? Do you track it? Uh, yes, in fact, uh, two days back we saw that uh, a big uh, candle was formed on the upside, which was indicating that there is a, a decent breakout. And yesterday there was some consolidation of profit booking to what happened two days back. So I think the overall structure is still positive and uh, uh, the pullback has already happened I, and I think this would be used as a buying opportunity. Uh, so from a trading perspective, uh, for two to three days, uh, this is a buy. One can look for a stop loss at uh, 520 and on the upside we will be looking for a target of 555. It's all about PSU banks, by the way, Corporation Bank, Yuko Bank, Syndicate Bank, Indian Bank. That's whole clutch of those names which are doing really well for themselves in the session today. So watch out for PSU banks. The cut in the yields is really helping uh, some of these rate sensitives. PSU banks, autos, that's the pocket that you've got to monitor in the session today. Really smart moves in, in that particular bucket. One stock that has started off slightly soft is Sun Pharma on those observations that we spoke about. Started off about a percent, percent and a half. Now in the green. So the start was slightly weak, but has bounced back very strongly. Shrikant, any thoughts? See, uh, Neeraj, we are specifically bullish on pharma companies. And the reason is because Nifty Pharma Index is showing a lot of strength. Uh, number of components are uh, holding well above their important support areas. And in spite of having like specific news flow on the stock, they are rebounding from their important support areas, like even Sun Pharma also. After opening to 28, 29 levels, now again it is coming back to 36, 37. And Dr. Eddy was somewhere around 27, 50 few days back. Now it is at 28, 80, 28, 70 levels. So we are of the view that this particular sector is definitely going to do well in this year. And uh, we should look for adding stocks even at this price. But Sun Pharma specifically is holding well above the mark of 425. So it's a buy at this price with a stop loss at 425. Again, we can see the levels of at least uh, 450, 454 on the higher side. And we are specifically bullish on Dr. Reddy, which is currently trading at 2870. All right. Uh, Shrikant, thanks very much for joining us. Really appreciate you taking out the time. As also, uh, Devin and Shubham, appreciate uh, your time this morning on the platform. Markets are holding okay for themselves, uh, about a quarter of a percent higher on the Nifty 50. 12,283 is what you got on the Nifty, with the Nifty Bank holding ground. I believe it would be on the back of uh, you know a little a move on uh, SBI2, which is contributing from the PSU end. Coming up, uh, we talk about KEI Industries' business outlook for the new year with the chairman, Mr. Anil Gupta. And Atul Goel of Brigade Enterprises will be joining us to talk about new launches and sales. Stay tuned.